All right, so that was the last of our commands. Let's uh, let's dive into some missions. First one up okay. is first one up is faint. Actually, the first one up is not faint. Okay. Uh, mainly because I did a little edit at the last moment. Right. I I, I want to do this card because it was the first mission card I ever played, uh, and it's absolute rubbish. Okay. <laughs> I, I looked at it and I thought, hey, that's great, and and no, it's absolute rubbish. It's actually critical hit. Okay. Uh, which which yeah. is really really bad. Uh, you play during a battle, choose one of your mechs, roll a die. On a one to five, you put critical hit back in your hand. And on a six, you do plus six damage. I had it in my opening hand, and I still had it in my hand at the end of the game. <laughs> Never um, once did it succeed, and that's why it is not reliable. Do not play unreliable cards in your deck, folks. You win a lot more. Yeah. yeah. It's a two. It's a two because sometimes you can be lucky. And only for that reason. Yeah. Well, don't get lulled into it, new players. All right. So now we're up to faint. Now we're up to faint. Yes. I think this is actually kind of one of those little under, underestimated mission cards that, that was used or could be used and used to good effect. Arguably, it might be better in draft. Um, choose one of your mechs, roll a die. Uh, one, one on the die is no effect. Two to six prevent all damage dealt to that one and received by that mech. It's a survival card. Um, very good against hunting decks. Very good if you've got that Ryokan D with that extra missile rack on there uh, and, and someone is going to go after it. Uh, I've seen that used by a, a friend of mine called Neil Rawlings uh, two or three times to great effect. Uh, and basically... Um, they go after the Ryokan D, you drop your faint, it deals no damage, but it receives no damage, it survives. Um, you know, useful. One of those that you, if you've only got this set, you might, you might play. Got it. Good stuff, anything before we jump on? I, I wouldn't include it in a current deck. Uh, if I'm only using the uh, original set in Counter-Strike, yes, I would play this card. Because okay. it, it prevents the clan hunt down, which is very popular. Right. All right, next one up. We got Forge Mission Orders. Yeah. Um, again, very good card. Um, play only when blocked, untap a blocking mech. So you, if you win initiative, generally the case when you're attacking, you can wait for the guy to say, I'm going to deal that damage or, or I'm going to play a mission card and do that. And then you can remove the mech. The interesting one with this is it actually stops a card which came out later called React, Reactor Breach, um, which is, again, a very powerful card. Um, if, if, some, if you attack and the guy chump blocks just throwing something in front, forge mission order it, hit your stockpile, damage dealt. Got it. It's a fantastic card. I would, I would, I would say uh, in your uh, draft, it's a, it's, a, it's a 10. In your constructed in this meta, it's also a, an eight or a nine. Uh, it's a fantastic card. In fact, even in the current meta, I would still play uh, one of these uh, or two of these in a deck. It's a good, good mission because it ensures damage is dealt uh, to the stockpile. And if you have initiative, it ensures that their unit that's the biggest, baddest unit that attempted to block is out of the game or out of that battle. Gotcha. Awesome. All right, next one up. Good shooting. Yep. Um, again, simple mission card. Choose one of your mechs. That mech gets plus two attack. I think with this card, the, the damage boost uh, from playing a mission was, was established, really. This, this mission gives you plus two. There are a number of missions that give you minus one, plus one i.e. receive one less damage and deal one extra damage. It's basically the same value. What you'll see later is that when you look to other mission cards that deal more damage, then there is some sort of restriction on them or, or a die roll or, or an inhibiting factor. So this is, this is tried and tusted, trusted. You get exactly what you see. You get plus two damage, and it's the benchmark card across the board for, for damage for me. Is it, is it playable these days? Yeah, it's probably playable. There are probably arguably better cards and cards you'll want to put in your deck to fit a theme. But if you've got just limited and, and maybe Counter-Strike, then you know what you're going to get. It's a six for me. I can't include this in a deck. I would play Pushing the Envelope 
every time over good shooting. I, I want the three, the plus three attack, and I'll take the three damage to my unit. Okay. Pushing, uh, pushing with a Counter Strike card, right? Pushing envelope. Nope. No. Is it? Okay. I, I, I'm pretty sure it's it. It's the. It's, it's coming uh, up. Limited. Oh, is it limited? Okay. All right. Um, next one, heavy fog. Yeah, stands the test of time. This one, arguably for me, one of the best defensive mission cards available. Um, it takes a little bit to understand it because the wording's not great. Attacking mechs each get minus two attack and receive two less damage. Um, so if if you're if you're a clan player, uh, and the, arguably the best example I can pull out of this is Peter Sundholm's uh, first world champion uh, wolf deck. He had six heavy fogs in the sideboard because he'd heard about the uh, inner sphere swarms the two cost mechs that came out two a time, two a time, two, two every turn that did two damage. Uh, so with this card, uh, this mission card in his hand, he had a couple of options. One, because there's no restrictions on blocking, he could just let them go straight through to the stockpile and say, right, everyone does two less damage. They all do two damage, so they deal nothing. So he can, so he can just let them go through. Or uh, he can actually defend uh, play the mission card, they all deal two less damage and receive two less damage, but he can over damage one of the mechs. So if they needed six to kill, he could deal eight to kill it, mm. and that's all out of the way. So it, it gives your mech survivability and allows you potentially to, to pick off the other guys or just let them through and deal nothing. Very, very op uh, useful in that respect. I really like heavy fog in a missile deck uh, because that uh, minus two attack for my uh, missile boat that already is down to zero because of all those uh, retrofits. Um, it's great uh, that I can play this as the attacking uh, player uh, who's likely to have initiative prevent the extra damage. So they block with enough to kill my Ryokan D. I prevent the damage. My missiles all go over the top. I'm good to go. Awesome. Rating, final rating. Keep it it's in your deck. It's, it's a nine, nine or a 10. It is one of the best mission cards available as a defensive player. Awesome. All right, next one, uh, Heroic Sacrifice. Okay, uh, play only if you have tactics in play. I, I don't know why they put the wording there because you're gonna have tactics in play to have initiative basically. Right. Uh, okay, there are situations where your tactics has been removed or destroyed or whatever else, but it's completely irrelevant. Uh, and only when blocked. So, okay, deal all, sorry, double all damage dealt to one of your mechs, deal that mech's damage to the target. So this is the heroic sacrifice. This is me going forward. I take twice as much damage, but I can deliver that damage to my target. There was a very interesting, uh, or at least a fun, um, Wizards of the Coast deck, uh, which was called the Heroic Hunchback. Uh, and there's one particular Hunchback uh, clan card, I think it's the 2C, that's uh, a 1 for 5, uh, overheat for 5, or alpha for Alpha five. strike for 5. Alpha for 5. So basically, you've got 10 damage on that mech. So what you would do, uh, again, probably better in draft, is that you would go up there, you would, you would L for it, it's going to die anyway, you play your heroic sacrifice and deal 10 straight to the stockpile. Uh, and again, on a 40 card game, that's, that's considerable. Um, probably better in draft, you're probably not going to play it in, in any sort of con uh, tournament or constructed, but it has its uses. On a stalemate board in, in a draft setting, absolutely. I think it could be up there around uh, an eight or nine and constructed. It's a one or a two for me. I would never play this in a constructed deck. Got it. Next one up, leap before you look. I like this card and I think it's underestimated by a lot of people. As I, as I said earlier, a few cards back, good shooting gives you plus two. Anything higher than that comes at a price. Uh, and the price for this is the fact that you can only play it on a mech that jumps. Put that in context, probably about 40% of the mechs in the game have got jump. So it's not arguably going to be a main board card. But as a sideboard card, definitely, if, if you're worried about that particular uh, one. 
uh, there was a player called uh, Barry Young who was very good at playing swarms and, and the, the Solaris pilot versions of those. Uh, and in Worlds 2000, no, 98, he came fourth. He valued that this card that highly that he even had one in the main deck uh, and another in the sideboard, possibly two. The other use for this one are, is, is um, elemental points. They have four structure, no armor, and they jump. So if you if you know someone's playing an elemental point deck, this is actually really really good. You're getting four damage, which is which is rare. Um, I like it as a sideboard card. As a sideboard card, I think it's extremely uh, high as well. That uh, that ghost bear uh, uh, strip mining operations elemental point dragonfly deck uh, being able to hit those dragonflies for four or those elementals and take them out for four is huge. Uh, sideboard only, it's it's an eight or a nine because it is that good in in the sideboard in those situations. Uh, I wouldn't put this in main deck. Okay. All right, next card coming up: Luck of the Fox. Yeah. Again, this 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 is uh, this is a nostalgia thing, and arguably a link into uh, Yick's deck, um, the Davian Swarm deck that I mentioned when we were talking about Heavy Fog. Uh, Yick's deck was basically twenty twenty five resources, thirty mechs, and a few mission cards, and it was pretty good against Clan, especially people that didn't know how to play against it. Where it struggled was actually the Bearer of McKinsey Hammer McMallet deck. Uh, it really couldn't beat the Bearer deck, maybe, maybe once in three kind of thing. Um, there is a die roll in there, uh, but the card says, choose a mech the opponent controls. Okay, so you don't have to block, which is a bonus. Roll a die, no effect. Okay, so the card goes. Two to three, return luck of the fox to your hand. Uh, four to six, prevent all damage dealt by that mech. So you've got a 50% chance of, of stopping all damage from that mech. If you roll a two or three, it comes back to your hand, which means you can play it again and again and again. So this was his method of trying to deal with the bearer style decks that untap and untap and untap. If he deals damage and you get a two or three, you have a go next go. If, if you hit a four, five, or six, you prevent, prevent the damage. And from that perspective at that time, it was actually quite reasonable. Have I ever seen one played in a deck again? No. Is anyone going to play it? No. Does it make an appearance? Yeah, Commander's Edition boxes. You know, it, it's not bad, but it's not going to get played. Let's skip right to the next one. We've already talked about this one. High quality, lured into the bog. Yeah, lured into bog. Um, a lot of people misread this one. Mm. Play only when attacked. All attacking mechs may be blocked regardless of their speed until the end of turn. That's not the end of mission. That's the end of turn. So if you've got this card in your hand and you're playing a slow deck and the guy's coming across with fast, put it on the table. Thank you very much. Now I can block anything he wants. Hmm. Um, it's very, very good to counter fast, fast mix. It's fantastic. If you're playing Inner Sphere, this is a card that you want to have either main deck or even, or for sure, in sideboard. Awesome. Inner Sphere is just slower. Yeah. All right. Next one up. So high rating. We're doing uh, really like this one. Load into bog. Rating eight. I I went for nine. If you're an Inner Sphere player. Got it. All right, overwhelm. Overwhelm. Uh, again, uh, this is this is again probably a little underrated. Um, very, or or used quite a bit in in early decks, especially those swarms. The only time you'll ever see it, or or possibly see it mentioned after that, was in Tom Shyster Smith's uh, Rocky Gorge Master deck in in two thousand. Um, but it's 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 a focus card. Choose an engaged mech your opponent controls. All of your mechs deal damage only to that mech. Each of your mechs gets plus two attack. Mm -hmm. So if, if the guy's got something that's a bit heavy and, and, a, and a bit durable and, and going to give you a world of hurt, you can gang up on it and everything gets plus two. So it's one of those ways of dealing with that gunslinger or that thunderhawk. Um, you know, not bad, 
uh, in its function. Does it get played? No. People tend to go with, with other missions instead. For me, it's probably a seven. It's a two. I wouldn't play this in the deck. There are so many better things to be playing than Overwhelm in order to, to, to deal with the Big Mac. Got it. Things, things that came later or things even in the current meta, the limited meta? And if you're playing in the limited meta, I, I still wouldn't uh, play this. In, in it. The picture shows uh, a bunch of, uh, it looks like cicadas uh, try, or trying, or Jenner's trying to get rid of a mad cat. Uh, mm -hmm. That's not how I would deal with a mad cat. I would, I would tap it with the misrouted commands. Uh, I would uh, um, deal with it in a different way than uh, with uh, an overwhelm. I, I don't think that's... Arguably, that is, arguably superseded by better missions. Yeah, or, better missions or, or are out there. Cards. Yeah. Um, but at the time, not bad. Not bad. Yeah. And speaking of better missions, we already talked about this one, pushing the envelope. Gustav, tell yeah. us about... Yeah, it's a, it's a rated nine, nine for me. Uh, yeah. The ability, uh, a lot of the clan fast mechs, uh, I'm looking at those Fenrises that, that'll do four, or the dragonflies that have three plus AP. Um, that is the magic number seven right there. Um, the ability to hit seven is so important. Please link uh, Mark Roberts' uh, article on the ability of seven. It's a, it's a masterpiece. Uh, this card gets you there uh, with one unit. Um, I, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of this card. And uh, I, in limited, it's, it's a nine. In, in constructed play, I still think it's a, a seven or eight. It, it, it has st stood the test of time. It's a good card. The big bonus with this card is playing it when you're attacking and winning initiative and you know where your opponent is is going to deal damage if they decide to take out one of your units then three damage on that unit is is it's dead anyway it makes no difference um if they if they split the damage then you can choose where to put it, it it's your choice um yeah it, 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 it's solid it knows what it's doing it, it does it every time Three damage comes at a price. All right, next one up, rapid cooldown. Um, yeah, uh, it's a bit circumstantial. Roll a die, mechs don't receive overheat damage uh, on a one to three. On a four to six, mechs do not receive overheat damage and return it to your hand. Sounds like a win-win situation to me in that it, respect. It, it, it. When we're talking about die rolls, this is the best die roll you could possibly have. You get the benefit you want, and you get the benefit you want, and you get to do it again. If you're in an overheat deck, I'm looking at uh, you, Karita, uh, Jenners, uh, where uh, we don't have access to Redline Pilots. We don't have access to Deep Lake. Uh, those cards come later in sets. Uh, this is the ability to do your overheat and not damage your own mechs. And also, remember, if you're the attacking player, your opponent doesn't know you're not going to be receiving overheat damage. So they may account for your overheat damage when they deal with the allocation of units. So this can actually be uh, a prevent damage uh, from play. Got it. All right, next up, Sacrifice for the Dragon. Yeah. Remember I said about that, that two cost plus two damage card. Mm -hmm. This one has, has, has a, a real potential, but again, it, it's at the price. Choose one of your mechs, roll a die, one to two, draw a card. Well, that's not too shabby. Mm -hmm. There are worse things that can happen on a one to two. Three to five, that mech gets plus two attack and receives one damage. So you're into good shooting territory. On a six, you get plus six and receive two damage. So you can use it as a sacrifice card. Uh, also note there's no blocking condition here. So if, if, if your opponent lets you go through to the stockpile, you can just try for a plus six, mm -hmm. which, which is, again, you know, 40 damage plus six is, is getting into that six or a seventh. So, so it can, can really hurt in that respect. Um, you know, do you feel lucky? If you're a Krita player, you'll play this over critical hit. But remember what Mark said earlier in this podcast about critical hit. That's all I have to say. It's a one or two for me. Okay. Satchel charges next up. Again, this this one is uh, history. Uh, the Evil Dasher deck that, that Wizards of the Coast put out and is included in this. We'll upload it. Um, 
didn't take into account some of the uh, mission cards that were played. This was arguably one of them. Uh, if you remember before we talked about Black Market and Melissa Steiner uh, scrapping one of those cards from your hand, this is one of those other cards that can be used to, to get some damage out of that spare munitions that you've got and, and, and aren't going to put on the table. Um, so people often missed out the fact that this was useful uh, and could give a, a reasonably guaranteed bonus. Uh, choose an attacking mech, roll a die, one to two, draw a card. Not too bad. Three to six, that mech gets plus two attack for each card you scrap from your hand. It's not going to get played these days. Uh, people's resources are probably more likely to go into Black Market or Melissa to get the, the cards they really want. Um, but early on in the game, then it was actually one of the ways of, of utilizing all of those spare resources in, the cap, in your hand. And um, quickly moving through, Strength of Pillar of Steel, kind of similar idea, kind of obsolete you know, in the current Why? game. Play only when you're blocking, fine. It gives you plus one initiative. So I've played it and I get another initiative so I can play another mission card. Why don't I just play the mission card to start with? The only thing you can say here is prevent one damage to each blocking mech, which if you go back to good shooting being your, your standard of plus, plus two, minus one, plus one. It, it, it's got less effect, uh, arguably. I know it's each blocking mech, but again, not one of those cards that I would, would put anywhere these days. I think it went in my first in their sphere deck and didn't go very far after that, apart from back in the box. I've never played it. It's a one. It's a one. I think I had one deck and two expansions at the time when I put it in the deck. <laughs> All right, next one, study move. Now, we definitely talked about this in, in podcasts coming up, so this one yeah. has survived on some level. Let's talk about it. Yeah, I, I know Michael is, uh, Michael Cohen is a very big fan of this card. Uh, I'm, I'm not so much a, can, a fan of it. Uh, it. Basically, it's a mission. And it says return a mission card from your scrap heap to your hand. Okay, fine, you get your mission back. I'm going to need to jump or have a pilot to play that mission again. And arguably well, isn't Black Market going to do what I want? Or, or Melissa, arguably. So why am I playing a mission to get, to get a mission back? It's a five. Because it's, you, it could be used. You might, you might, you might play in draft, but after that, that's, that's about it for me. Yeah. I think Chad Edwards used this in his uh, World Championship deck because he wanted the split of, of one 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 singleton missions and have the uh, flexibility of a studied move to be able to pull the right mission in at the right time, uh, whether you need a Blitzkrieg, uh, whether you need one of those kind of things. And a lot of his mechs in that deck had jump to get that extra initiative. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, uh, it, it, it was um, uh, Tom Scheister smith who, who beat Chad's free deploy deck in, in the final with the Gorge. Yeah, he, yeah. Had, um, he had FMO, he had Blitzkrieg, he had final push in there. He could yep. pull any one of those he wanted, depending on the situation and how the player was playing. So it, it, it's, it's a flexible deck. card, but I, I would I would I wouldn't play this. I would rather play another mission that I want to have. I want I want to play another overrun. I want to play a forge mission orders. Um, I want to play more of consistency rather than uh, the one of. So this is not a uh, a card I would use. I understand why you'd give it a ranking of a five. I'd give it a ranking of a of a two or three. So the main value here is just uh, just selecting, you know, being able to kind of choose on the fly of kind of what mission you're going to play. Is that what you're yeah. saying? But you have to have the right mission card in your st in your scrap heap at that point in time, right. which again is not necessarily consistent. Got it. All right, next one: temporary ceasefire. I had to put this one in. Um, uh, the first tournament I ever played in was the British Nationals, and uh, I played a very good player called Rob Matthews, who was playing a. Solaris pilot deck against my wolf deck and after the first round where he thwacked me quite quite nicely uh, this was the card that I sideboarded in uh, in order to uh, win the next game um, basically play during battle roll a die one your mechs deal, deal no damage and you draw a card two to six all your mechs deal dam uh, all mechs deal no damage so Rob was playing with a lot of pilots with Forge Mission Orders, uh, two of those, and two overruns. Uh, and, and I needed a win. So I took my, my heart in my hand and, and went for it. And uh, he attacked with a big group 
and I blocked with a single mech and played temporary ceasefire and rolled a four. Uh, and then he did exactly the same the next turn. And my th poor little Fenris C stood there and waved the white flag and I rolled a five. And then he attacked the final turn and I rolled a two and my Fenris C uh, gave a big sigh of relief. Uh, and then I beat him on the next turn. And without that card, I wouldn't have done it. Um, flexible, useful, can be used to, to defend or, or in that respect or keep your mech alive. Do you see it so much? No, not these days. Um, but it has its place for me. It, it's, it's a useful card. You could put it in most decks and, and it would, would play. Um, is it meta? No. It definitely can see play. I can see it as a five or a six. Um, it definitely can see play, especially uh, as a cyborg card. All right, gamers. So that concludes the second part of my conversation with Mark and Gustav talking about the mission cards. Definitely make sure you're checking out the description to catch the first and third part of this conversation and subscribe. Hit that bell notification if you want to find out when we are releasing the videos for the other expansions, Counter-Strike, MechWarrior, Mercenaries, and so on, because uh, we'll be doing a breakdown of all of those as well. So put a comment down below if you have questions about a mission that we either did cover or didn't cover. We'll be happy to kind of check that out, make sure we kind of cover all the bases uh, to give you guys the information you need to maximize your enjoyment of uh, this great game from the late 90s, early 2000s. But this is Travis signing off. Thanks again for watching, and uh, we'll catch you on the next video. Bye.